Mom, can I come in? Oh, Lucy, good timing. I've just switched off my PC and I'm ready to have lunch with you. Me too, I'm hungry. Let's go then. We usually we have no time to talk. Oh, can I make a phone call before we leave? Yes, sure, thanks. Hi, this is Lucy Fraser. I'd like to talk to Mr. Gatti, please. Roberto, this is Lucy Fraser. I'm calling to check the delivery of an order placed last month. The order number is NJ566. There is a delay in the delivery. Yeah. I see. I see. So the order is divided into two shipments. Okay, the second shipment is still in transit? No, I need to know if the goods can be delivered before the weekend. This is a big inconvenience. Sure, I would appreciate that. I'll give you my mobile phone number so that you can get back to me at any time, okay? 07233823344. Okay, thank you, Roberto. Goodbye. Oh, honey, you must be starving. Here is a nice toasted sandwich well, for you. Kind of you. And here's an orange juice mm. and hot coffee. Mm. Great. <laughs> we use state of the art equipment now a toaster, a juicer, and a coffee maker. <laughs> Hi there. Are you ready to practice some business English? In the business world, you will frequently place orders by phone, letter, or via email. When you place an order, you can request a quick delivery or delivery of the goods by a certain date. Goods is a very common word in business and means items for sale, merchandise. Delivery, in our scene, means sending or bringing goods to the people who want them. Lucy discovers that the goods she ordered are divided into two shipments. A shipment means a large amount of goods sent together to a place. The second shipment is still in transit, which means it is traveling from one place to another. Unfortunately, there may be some problems, such as delays. A delay is when you have to wait longer than expected for something to happen. For example, there is a delay in the delivery of the goods. Please pay your bill without further delay. Delays are inconveniences, problems. When it happens, you can say, we apologize for any inconvenience, which means that you're very sorry. Let's conclude with some common expressions and terms you heard in the dialogue. When Miranda brings the toasted sandwich, Lucy says, how kind of you. You say, how kind of you when someone does something generous or helpful. Miranda can make the toasted sandwich, the coffee, and the orange juice thanks to her state-of-the-art equipment. State-of-the-art means very modern and using the most up-to-date ideas and methods. For example, I want to buy a state-of-the-art computer but at the moment, I don't have enough money. Right. That's all for this training session. See you soon. Bye. Excuse me. May I sit here? Yeah, sure. My name is Archie. I'm Linda. Linda, what a lovely name. What are you doing here all by yourself? I'm having a break. What do you do for a living, may I ask? 
I'm the personal assistant to a lawyer. Do you like your job? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Are your working conditions good? Yes, the salary is good. I work from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and I have two days off every week. And the office is very comfortable. Do you have any promotion prospects? No, I don't think so. Do you attend training courses? Yes, sometimes. What do you do? I am a photographer for travel magazines. Wow, that sounds great. Do you meet a lot of people? I meet people from all walks of life. Hmm. I can show you my portfolio and maybe we could ah, get together. Linda, uh, excuse me. Uh, you left your mobile in the office and Miranda didn't know how to reach you. She's going crazy. What's the matter? It's a priority. Miss Adams is in London and someone must escort her. Unfortunately, I'm busy, so you should take her out to dinner. I've already booked a table for two at the Japanese restaurant in Charlotte Street. You know, Tottenham Court Road, Good Street Tube Station. Sorry, I have to do this. Hope to see you again. Hi, and welcome to this business session. Today, we're going to introduce some terms and sentences related to asking about and describing a job. When you want to know about someone else's occupation, you can ask, what do you do for a living? Or, what do you do? They can answer, I am a secretary. I have a job as a sales assistant. I work as a cook. I work for a publishing company. Once you know what the other person's job is, you can ask, do you like your job? Or, do you enjoy your job? Archie asks Linda, are your working conditions good? Working conditions describe someone's working environment and situation, such as hours of work, safety, paid holidays, etc. When you answer, you can say, the salary is good, reasonable, high. I work from 9 to 5, and I have a certain number of days off. A day off is a day when you do not work. Another important aspect of a job is related to promotion prospects. A promotion prospect is the possibility to access a higher or more important position. Sometimes you have to attend or take training courses. A training course teaches you the skills you need to do a particular job or activity. In this dialogue, there are some quite common terms and expressions. Linda says that she is having a break. A break is a short rest period. You can say, I take or I have a break and I need a break. Archie meets people from all walks of life which means people with different types of jobs and from different social levels. Miranda did not know how to reach Linda. To reach means to communicate with someone in a different place, especially by phone. For example, I'm trying to reach her on the phone, but the line is engaged. You can also reach a decision or reach an agreement. For example, you can reach a decision to practice your English regularly. Well, I really hope you do, and I'll see you soon for another training session. Bye. How are you today, John? Fine, thank you. Today I would like to know about the place you live in. I'm afraid there's not much to say. I live in a studio flat. What do you know about Feng Shui? I don't know much about it. Feng Shui is an ancient Chinese belief. According to it, the layout of your house, how you arrange objects in it, 
influences your success, your health, your happiness. That makes sense. I feel very strongly influenced by the objects that surround me. If you don't mind, I would like to ask you about those objects. The furniture in my flat is very simple and basic. I like essential design. The only fancy piece of furniture is a baroque table where I keep my makeup products, creams, foundation, eyeshadows, face powder, mascara, lipstick, things like that. Makeup products. Yes. You know, I'm a hairdresser and a makeup artist. My friends Lily and Brenda come to my place over the weekend. They always want my help for a hairdo and some makeup. I love doing that. It's my favorite pastime. Hi and welcome to this health and body care workout. In this session, we are going to focus on makeup products. Makeup means colored substances used on your face to improve or change your appearance. Mr. Little's flat is full of makeup products, as he is a makeup artist and a hairdresser. When you want to put on makeup, first you apply a face cream. Then you apply foundation, a type of makeup which is spread over the skin of the face. And finally, you powder your face. Face powder is a skin colored powder used on the face to make it look less shiny and more attractive. Then you can apply eyeshadow, a colored cream or powder which is put around the eyes. If you like, you may use an eyeliner. And finally, mascara to make your eyelashes look thicker and longer. In order to look great, you must not forget your hairdo, do in American English, the style in which a person has his or her hair. You can have a simple or elaborate hairdo. Mr. Little talks to Raymond also about the place he lives in. Our living environment has a huge influence on our well-being at least according to the ancient Chinese belief, Feng Shui. Mr. Little lives in a studio flat, in American English, studio apartment. A studio flat is a small apartment for one or two people, usually with one large room for sleeping and living in, a bathroom, and possibly a separate kitchen. In this dialogue, there are some common expressions. That makes sense, said when something is obvious or clear from the facts. You can also say, it stands to reason. Lily and Brenda visit Mr. Litter over the weekend. This means during the weekend. For example, I like to go to the cinema over the weekend. Mr. Little enjoys helping Lily and Brenda. It's his favorite pastime. A pastime is an activity which is done for enjoyment, a hobby. My favorite pastime is taking pictures. And yours? Okay, our time is over. I have to say goodbye and I'll meet you in the next training session. It's surprising I got here on time. What's the matter? Apart from a splitting headache, I have an irregular heartbeat and I'm anemic. I see. I also have a hiatus hernia. 
and a backache. What does your GP say about this? He prescribed me sedatives and says I will recover soon. If you don't mind, I'd like to know something about your lifestyle. There's not much to say. I work as a dressmaker for a well-known clothing shop. I stay home all day long, mostly on my own. What can you tell me about your daily routine? My life is very boring. Every day is the same as the one before. I understand. I'd like to give you some homework for our next visit. Some homework? Yes. I'd like to ask you to take pictures of your daily activities with your mobile phone. I'm afraid I don't know how to do that. Oh, come on. It's very easy. Even my elderly mother can take pictures with her mobile phone. I'll show you. First, search for the camera icon in the menu. Frame the picture and press. Hi, and welcome to this health and body care session. Today, we are going to talk about some terms, verbs, and expressions related to diseases. A disease is any anomaly affecting normal body function. It may also be called illness or ailment. Felicity has a splitting headache, an irregular heartbeat, etc. You can have, suffer from, or get an illness. In order to cure an illness, you can visit your GP. GP is an abbreviation for general practitioner, a doctor who provides general medical treatment for people who live in a particular area. He is also called family doctor or family physician in the US. When you are sick, the doctor gives or makes a diagnosis. Then he or she prescribes some medicine or gives you a prescription for some medication. A prescription is a slip of paper on which a doctor gives the details of the medicine that you need. When the cure is effective, you recover from an illness. For example, the doctors say it will take her a few days to recover. Did he fully recover from his illness? To conclude, let me explain some terms and expressions from the dialogue. Felicity is a dressmaker. A dressmaker is a woman who sews and alters clothes. The male counterpart is called a tailor. She spends a lot of time at home on her own. On one's own means alone without the company of other people. You can also say, I did this on my own, which means with no help from other people. And finally, the expression to take some pics. Pic is informal for picture. I like to take pictures with my digital camera. And you? Right. That's all for today's session. See you soon for another workout. Bye. Excuse me, Emily, can you make me some chamomile tea? I'm not feeling well. I'm sorry, but I have to go right now. Can you take my place for a while? Uh, sure, but... The travel agency called me a few minutes ago. I have an amazing deal for a package tour. Listen to this. Business class flight to Sydney, plus 20 days car rental for a very low price. This offer expires today, so I have to pay a deposit to assure the reservation. Okay, but you know I'm not a great barmaid. Wait, there's more. This offer also includes four nights in a luxury hotel, and continental breakfast is included. Well, if breakfast is included... Okay, I'm going. You know what to do, right? Uh -huh.
You're so sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Hello? I forgot to tell you. The coffee machine is out of order. And the blender isn't working. No, well, it works, but only if you know how to use it. But there's no fruit anyway. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I see. I couldn't find the bottle opener. And what's more, our cook is sick. And there's nothing to eat. But don't worry, you'll be fine. <laughs> Great, thanks. Bye. Hi, and welcome to our travel and entertainment session. Are you feeling fine? So what are we waiting for? Let's start practicing. Today, we're going to talk about some terms and sentences related to travel and package tours in particular. As you know, a package tour is a holiday at a fixed price in which the travel company arranges your travel, hotels, and sometimes your meals. Emily is looking at an amazing deal, a package tour to Sydney for a very low price. The package tour includes a business class flight to Sydney. You can fly business class, first class, or economy. The flight to Australia is a very long one, and flying business class or first class is highly recommended. Along with the flight, the package tour includes car rental, for 20 days. To rent or hire a car means to pay a fixed amount of money to use a car for a certain period. In Sydney, Emily will stay in a luxury hotel and continental breakfast is included. Breakfast is the first meal of the day. The other main meals are lunch and dinner. You can have breakfast lunch or dinner, or eat breakfast. In hotels, breakfast is served. For example, breakfast is served in the dining room from 7.30 to 10. When you want to make a reservation, you usually have to pay a deposit. A reservation is when you ask in advance for a seat on an aircraft or a table at a restaurant. A deposit is a sum of money that you pay in advance as part of a total payment for something. For example, I paid or I put a deposit of $200 or I left $200 as a deposit. You can pay a deposit or leave a certain amount as a deposit. Let's hope Emily has a pleasant holiday in Sydney. In the meantime, keep practicing and I'll meet you soon in our next workout. Bye. Emily, it says here that tonight there is the opening of the new cocktail bar Honey Lounge in Holborn. Yes, I know. It's the very same bar as in Greenwich Village on Bleecker Street. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Here it says that the cocktail menu will change every day. Ooh, but the famous Mr. Cool is served every night. Pity I can't come with you. It's on Chancery Lane. Could you tell me how to reach it? Sure. It's not far. But let me show you on the map. Okay. We are here. Okay. Turn left out of the bar. Mm -hmm. Then you go straight on. At the crossroads, turn right. Okay. You walk along the road until you reach the traffic lights, go past the park, and then take the second left. Okay. Walk along the road, go past a park, second left. Oh, that's Milton Road, isn't it? No, it's Chancery Lane. The cocktail lounge is in front of a bank near the supermarket. Okay. Good. Now, what about tasting this cocktail before leaving? Why not? It's very simple. You mix the vodka with blueberry syrup and a 
spray of lime, and you shake everything with ice cubes. I think I know this recipe. Yes. You garnish it with basil leaves. And here's your Mr. Cool, the coolest cocktail in town. Hi, and welcome to this travel and entertainment session. Today, we are going to talk about giving directions. Directions are instructions that you give to someone about how to find a particular place. When you ask for directions, you can say, Could you tell me the way to Bleecker Street? Could you tell me how to reach Milton Road? Could you tell me where the Honey Lounge is? And do you know how I can get to the Honey Lounge? The person who is giving directions can say, Let me show you on the map. You can say that the place is not far, not distant. When you show the place where you are on the map, you say, We are here in Holborn. But let's see some sentences that may be useful when you have to give directions. Turn right, turn left, take the first, the second, the third, right or left, go straight on, go past, walk along the road. When you reach the, you can reach it on foot, by car, by bus. In this dialogue, Emily has used some common terms. Emily says that the new cocktail bar is terrific. Terrific is an adjective and it means very good. You can say, this is a terrific opportunity or you look terrific. The cocktail Emily has prepared is cool. Cool in this context means excellent, very good. Do you like studying English? Yes, it's cool. So keep practicing and I'll see you soon for another training session. Bye.